Welcome to a very special episode of Let's Talk with Asian Sunday. Now, normally we have a guest um, on our wonderful yellow couch discussing amazing um, successes and their amazing journey. However, today this is a very special episode in light of the recent racism row uh, with Yorkshire County Cricket Club. Um, Azim Rafiq, former cricketer of the club, has made some very serious allegations. Most of those allegations have been upheld and the racism row has continued. In fact, it's amplified and once again, the debate around racism and discrimination in sport is a hot topic. With the situation now going to be discussed at the DCMS Select Committee next week, we thought it was very important that we brought the debate and discussed exactly what has happened and how this impacts on the South Asian community. So my very special guest today is somebody who has been challenging and has been an active campaigner for racism and discrimination in sports over a number of years. He is a solicitor at Eisen Harrison Solicitors, specialising in employment law and discrimination cases. And as I said, he's also a committed campaigner and promoter of equality and diversity in sport and society. He's had a long history with the Football Association, being the last chair on their race and equality board. He offers advice and representation at various sports disciplinary hearings before governing bodies, especially concerning allegations of discrimination and online communications. He is Mr. Yunus Lunat. Hello. Thank you. Uh, what an interruption. <laughs> <laughs> You've done so much I had to write it down just so I didn't get it wrong. Um, but thank you so much for coming on the show at such short notice and to talk about something very, very serious. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's shone a light again um, on cricket this time. But as I've been saying, this is an issue, a sport-wide issue. Um, and the problem is with uh, the reporting and the media and the agenda is they look at it in a prism and also only tend to focus upon cricket. There's an issue in cricket. No, this is a sport-wide issue. This is a society-wide issue. And that's what the has been saying as well. It's, it's about society. It's about all sports. So we've got to make sure that the pressure is uh, brought to bear and maintained on sport as a whole. And there is a serious discussion about the lack of representation, mm. uh, not just of, um, of the black community, but certainly, as I've been saying, uh, of the South Asian uh, and the Asian community. Where are we in sport? Where are we? Where, where are we on the pitch? Where are we in the boardroom? Where are we at executive level? Mm. Absolutely. I mean, you raised some very valid uh, points there, which we'll obviously discuss uh, uh, during the course of this um, this episode. I think one of the um, the first thing I want to obviously commend is Azim's bravery, and he's obviously highlighted this issue a couple of years ago. And thanks to his perseverance, it's now actually been discussed, and some uh, resignations have happened, and a new appointment. Uh, has been made, which obviously we'll discuss. But I think one of the first things before we discuss any of that is the um, the definition of racism. What is racism? I mean, one of the discussions that came um, on this was, uh, you know, saying that the P word was banter and not racism. Obviously, you deal with these kind of things uh, on a day to day basis in, in your normal everyday job as a solicitor. What do you have to say to that? Well, I chair disciplinary cases, discrimination cases for the Football Association. Mm. And for a participant appearing before a commission um, to try to use a defence of banter when they're being accused of acting in a discriminatory way, there's nothing worse that a participant can do that will wind up the commission than try to describe that as banter. Um, it's only banter because they've been getting away with it all these years. And they think there's, they can still get away with it, but society has changed, society has evolved. And certainly the P word, the N word, the Y word, 
can never ever be uh, reduced to banter because it has got historical baggage, um, it's de denied opportunities and subjected to pe people of those community uh, to suppression. So it can never ever, uh, and to, 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 to say so is an absolute insult, um, certainly in, in today's society, in today's. And yeah, let me say this, this isn't the first time that the P word or, or the N word or whatever, um, or even gender-based discrimination uh, has been tried to, attempted to be uh, reduced to banter. Uh, this time it is certainly getting the appropriate um, attention that it should. But well, we've been here before, uh, and people forget this, not many years ago, um, there was an issue, uh, there was an incident, there were two incidents in football I can relate to, and in both instances, there was no accountability. And this is what I've been saying for many, many years. There is a lack of accountability, and this is where we have to, this is where I absolutely admire Azim for his tenacity and perseverance. We had the incident in football where Marky Mackay uh, was um, found to have exchanged offensive messages about various communities and various uh, people. And the LMA, the Lee Managers Association, um, uh, basically described that as banter, and there was no accountability. Secondly, uh, there was the incident with the then Chief Executive uh, of the Premier League uh, exchanging messages uh, with a solicitor, um, basically um, demeaning women, mm. uh, sexist jokes, and that was washed away as banter. And again, there was no accountability in the sporting world. Yes, there was, where the solicitor was rebuked by the Solicitor Regulation Authority, but there's no accountability in football, in sport. And that's been the problem up to now in football. There is a lack of accountability. When we say racism and discrimination, mm. it's extremely important that those in power and the media report that discrimination is not just being called abusive comments, the P word, N word and Y word. Mm. Discrimination in law, mm. the common sense discrimination is also the continual absence and denial of opportunities for ethnic minorities to participate at senior level, to, to uh, opportunities in the boardroom, opportunities at executive level. Sport is still largely run by white middle-aged elderly men or white men. Um, it's slowly changing. There is progress made with gender and I'll explain, I'll come back to you as to why there's been progress with gender, but it's still largely uh, exclude, uh, an excluded vocation for ethnic minorities and certainly for South Asians. Hmm. That is also discrimination. Now, for me, it is so important that this issue that Azim has shone a light on does not simply focus upon the P word or the abusive comments. It got to look at the wider exclusion of Asians in representation. Mm. You make some really good points there. I think we've discussed the fact that obviously this incident happened, the P word was used, it was, uh, you know, uh, brushed aside as banter. Um, but thankfully, um, Azim persevered with that as a complaint. Now, on the other side, um, I, I've been speaking to obviously a lot of people within the South Asian community, a lot of our readers, my family as well, and a lot of them said, well, we've all, we've all been called the P word. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this news to a lot of people within our communities, they said, well, we're not, we're not shocked, we're not surprised. So on the other side, obviously, Azim's case has taken so long to get this far on the other side, people who do face that every day now, uh, you know, there's either a feeling of, well, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm expected, this is, this is standard, this is, um, you know, just put your head down and get on with it. Uh, or uh, even if I could do something, no one's going to listen to me. Um, and even if they did, you know, you've got people like Azim where it's taken nearly two years. People what you've got now yeah. is this isn't now. The process. This happened, this happened to us many years ago. Yes. Many years ago, mm. we were called the P word or the N word or whatever, yeah. Mm. Now, 
it doesn't really that doesn't really happen as often not to your face mm. the it's all unwitting discrimination right uh, the din- as i say mm. the denial of progression opportunities opportunities to get into organizations those are the forms of discrimination that we face every day not necessarily now people will not say those words to your face in today's society not like it used to happen now yeah. so that's why it's really important yeah that the inquiry the select committee yeah. does not simply focus upon yeah abusive comments right. because as i've said yeah sport has a limited understanding of discrimination mm. sports understanding of discrimination certainly football yeah. which has a lot of focus and cricket their limited understanding of discrimination is as long as you and i can attend a match yeah go home safely and mm. not be abused because of our race or religion or color yeah they think they've done a great job yeah they don't need to do anything else mm. i'm sorry to me that's not enough yeah you know that, that that's just to start mm. you know i keep coming back to this yeah where's the representation you look at you look at all the sports stadiums yeah invariably they're in areas of high ethnic population yes yeah mm. and then you attend those stadiums on a weekday non match day mm. and look at the demographic of the people that are working there how many brown and black faces are working there you know it doesn't even occur to our young people that you know what i don't have to be a sports person to actually work in that institution mm. i can be um i can be a solicitor i can be a finance person i can be a clerk and start my way work my way up from the bottom mm. it doesn't occur it's not a welcoming place for our people to actually even apply for employment now again where are they advertising mm. you know why why are they not attracting um our people to go and work there and it goes back to you know when you have been i've been in this system for 9 20 years now and i always used to ask people how did you get this job or how did you start off here hmm. and virtually every response was oh um so and so used to work at another place with me and so and so got a job here and when he or she got a job um asked me if I wanted to come and work for them you know or um somebody i know worked there and there was a vacancy you know it's all on a familiarity recruitment is on a familiarity basis and unfortunately that is not changing fast enough it's not uh, 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 and as i said how what's the dem- demographics of the people that work in those stadiums and again it's all this a lot of it, what's happened now at yorkshire mm. is commercial pressures pressures from sponsors sponsors lots of sponsorship uh, that's what's caused a lot of this now uh, resignations and everything happening but look at history um uh, and i use football as an example players have been accused and found guilty of acting uh, in a racist manner yet the only high profile player that has actually been dismissed by the club was Nicolas Anelka and that was because he was at the end of his career he had no commercial value but we all know who they are they are high profile players that have been found guilty of racism in football and the club have taken clubs have taken no action against them at all yet they keep telling us we have a zero tolerance policy what is zero tolerance and what is zero tolerance policy what does it mean mm. you know uh, and again in here it's because it seems to me that all once the sponsors started drifting away then head started to roll but what i say also is it's all very well the sponsors saying we don't want to be associated with racism or racist behavior again accountability i would say to the sponsors let's look at your organizations mm. let's look at the top of your organizations yeah. what what do they look like what, is that representative it's not mm. enough just to say we don't tolerate we have a zero tolerance policy what do you look like big can of worms there uh yunus i think one of the other things i wanted to i mean we're going to come back to quite a lot of the points that you raised there one of the things that i wanted to lead on to so obviously we looked at racism the issue um around you know what that definition is when the initial report um came out from yorkshire county cricket club they acknowledged they upheld some of azim's allegations and said yes there was racism but they denied institutional 
racism. What's the difference? And why is that important? Because Azim really, and, and again, credit to Azim because he really pushed, um, because he yeah. felt that there was, and obviously we've seen progress on that as well, haven't we? Yeah, again, what is the definition of institutional discrimination? Mm -hmm. And then let's decide if sport, and I say sport, is sport institutionally discriminatory? Mm. Institutional discrimination is the inability of an organisation to provide an appropriate and professional service to a group of people because of their colour, culture, ethnicity. And that uh, manifests, itself, manifests itself in processes and attitudes. So what, what do we have? You know, we've had a history of complaints by Azim. They were brushed aside. He had to keep persevering, persevering uh, before um, the club actually decided to set up an investigation. Uh, the, the, the county then have a report. The report upholds certain discriminatory conduct and behaviour, yet then they deem that to be not racist but banter. And then there's no accountability for uh, that as well until they are absolutely pushed and pushed and pushed. Now, to me, has it been, been provided with an appropriate prof uh, and professional service? Um, has he failed? Has that failure been, been because of culture, race or ethnicity? And is that because of attitudes? And what do we have from the our chairman's resignation was, we have a culture here that I'm struggling to move on with the times. That suggests to me that he's saying it's... He it literally threw some of his... It's, 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 it's an institutional-wide issue. Yeah. Now, again, I, I've, as I've explained as I've mentioned about the lack of visible role models, visible faces in sport, in boardrooms, in executive positions, for so long, in 2021, which suggests to me that there is an institutional issue in sport because they haven't been provided to, they haven't been moved on with the times to provide opportunities for ethnic minorities, it suggests to me that there is an institution-wide issue in sport. Some would argue, how can that be possible when you've got representatives on the board who look like them? Um, so you've got South Asian people, you've got board. black yeah, people, you've you got yeah, women yeah. on the board. Yeah. So One of the criticisms I've made for a few years now is what sort of people are being appointed and what happens when people get appointed? And mm. one of the criticisms I've made is Unfortunately to me, now when you scrutinise it, what concerns me is once people are appointed, or are they appointing people that are likely to toe the line and not be too challenging, right? And look, I've been in those rooms and it may well be that behind closed doors there is challenge, but mm. then you have to show a united front um, with the board up to a point uh, in public. Yeah, but are people being institutionalised once they've joined? Uh, are on the board? You know, there there appears to have been a lack of challenge. Are they being institutionalised, or are they too afraid? Well, are the right people being appointed? That's positions. the thing. Are they ask, is is sport too frightened to appoint people that will really challenge and shake up institutions? That's the test. You know, if you, don't be frightened of appointing people that will shake up your institution because that's what sport is saying, that we need to change, we need to move with the times. Mm. Which is interesting because obviously there have now been resignations at the Yorkshire County Cricket Club um, on the board, but also the chairs recently resigned. So obviously lots of new recruitment. And this is a, going to be a very important recruitment because they are really going to have to rebuild... Um, this club that's had, uh, mm -hmm. well, very bad image and apparently obviously some financial constraints with sponsors now also uh, dropping. If you were to advise in terms of selecting, recruiting the board, what would what advice would you give? Well, it, they've got to be brave, mm. as I said. Um, must not be frightened of appointing uh, individuals that will challenge mm. because that's what you need internally. Yeah. An organisation needs to be challenged to keep growing. 
if, if, if there's no challenge, then individuals and organizations stop growing. Um, they need to look wide um, and not simply focus on cricket. Um, there's a lot of the people that have worked in other sports that can be transferable skills. Uh, and, and, I, and I use the example of football again. Um, whilst football receives a lot of profile or, or, or of coverage and a lot of negative publicity as well because of the profile it has. But what this has shown is football is way ahead of cricket mm. when it comes to dealing with this sort of thing. Um, I dare say football would not have allowed this process to have been dragged out for 15 months and still no conclusion. Um, the FA would have been absolutely crucified as a governing body. The ECB hasn't been scrutinised to the same extent that the FA would have been. Um, and as I've said, um, where are the kick it outs and strong voices of cricket? I haven't seen or heard anybody. I'm struggling to actually recall anybody that's actually ever challenged the ECB in a big way like football gets challenged regularly. Where, where are these voices? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, unfortunately to me, uh, the cricket playing public, South Asians, have been too easily satisfied, I wouldn't use the word complicit, but too easily satisfied um, by little scraps that have been thrown um, by the ECB in Yorkshire. What, when, when you have the South Asian community that is actually keeping cricket going as a major sport, over a third, 35% of cricket is played by the South Asian community. Mm. Well, what that tells me is, but for the South Asian community, cricket would be a minor sport and actually would lose its funding. Mm. We're ticking the boxes for the ECB to continue to receive Sport England funding. Yeah. And, uh, and haven't realised the power the South Asian community has. You make a very valid point there because obviously, you know, you've got um, the institution, the board, their side and their responsibilities but then there's a responsibility incumbent upon us if we know that somebody has been subject to racism bullying um you know these organizations that you refer to kick it out for example you mentioned um but azim has also tweeted about the national asian cricket council um when he openly declared and made the allegations um against yorkshire county cricket club these uh, organizations that say that they're there to stamp out racism, um, to uh, ensure that there's a level playing field. Um, they were very slow and some still haven't even spoken um, to support Azim. Why do you think that is? Why, why do we have this? Why are we in this kind of state? Why is there this kind of culture? Bear in mind, is there a limit to be a campaigning body or not? I have seen a lack of a voice is the union, the Professional Cricketers Association. You know, when this first started, I actually wrote a piece at the time, last September, mm -hmm. and I questioned, you know, where is the Professional Cricketers Association? Because I bring it back to football, and the PFA would have been all over this, and supporting Azim, and uh, the, 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 the machinery of the PFA um, would have been all over this, but we've heard nothing from the professional critics the question Association. and I question whether Azim has received any support at all mm. from the professional critics Association because even after in the last couple of weeks when all this has now come to the fore mm. I still haven't seen or heard anything any comment from the professional critics Association and I mean on they're supposed to be once you're a member you're a member for life mm. but why are they even now not supporting him and it does it's really concerning yeah. the lack of the organization the lack of support in cricket yeah i mean it does raise the question whether they're fit for purpose uh, that's for other people to judge you know but certainly uh, the lack of voice the lack of support the lack of condemnation of what has happened to azim from his union um the absence of it um is, is striking and what about the clubs because there's lots of cricket clubs i mean i i remember and obviously you're from Kirklees. I remember going to a presentation, I think, uh, and, and I don't want to mention the club, but it was in Batley, and uh, the chief executive of Yorkshire County Cricket Club was invited. 
and it was literally red carpet treatment for him and he's there giving speeches and giving out trophies and awards um but as clubs there's sort of no accountability to um bodies like ycc to say look you know we need you to support us we need you to give us more we need you to or, or to challenge racism for example to challenge why um, people from our communities are not getting those opportunities. Um, so, you know, what can clubs well, do? I, I and, mean, the, and, and are clubs doing enough? Or are they just, you know... I've been saying for many years that it's not enough yeah. simply for the likes of your Mark Arthurs and whatever representatives from the counties just to attend your presentation evenings, you know, eat your samosas and kebabs and a bit of food and dish out a few medals and, and that sort of thing. It's not enough. You know, we, in football, we challenge. Why the, cha why, why the absence of challenge? You know, in, constructively, in mm. a positive way, engagement about the lack of progression for Asian cricketers, the lack of representation in, in, in the boardroom. Um, this has been happening for many, many years. So let's take the last sort of is it because years. we still we still have a colonial hangover? Possibly for the last. This is happening for at least the last ten years, right? And why has have they ever challenged Yorkshire uh, chief exec that look? What's the makeup of what's the makeup of your workforce? Why is it that we still not get the opportunities to work in Yorkshire CC? You know, um, as I say, unfortunately to me, it seems to be that participation tick box, that numbers in uh, participating in cricket, that then transfers to funding. Mm. You know, we Asians ensured that, or ensure that cricket continues to receive funding from Sport England, and it does not fall into a minor sport. And nobody's, we, we just haven't seen that. Interesting point. But there's, there's certainly, a, a, I've been saying for many years, uh, the lack of challenge, the lack of constructive challenge. So how do we um, empower our clubs, our communities to to be able to challenge? Well, we need to, firstly, uh, structurally, is to make inroads into committees. The league committees is the first stage. Hmm. The district leagues, the, 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 the league committees, and the probably are district committees as well and that's an inroad into representation at higher levels but we've got to we've got to put ourselves forward to um for election we've got to be on these committees and that that then starts the trajectory slowly to work your way through um there's got to be um clo uh, counties um have got to ensure that they're not satisfied with having um, one appointment um, of ethnicity on the board and we've done the job. You know, that's not enough. There's got to be more diversity on the boards. We have been different skills and that will give confidence for the ECB, that visible change is taking place, that will give confidence for the sponsors to start um, supporting the county as well. So there's got to be a number of appointments, but suitable appointments. And, as, and, I, and I come back to this, that there's got to be appointments of people that are going to challenge constructively to because if, we, if in the absence of challenge the organization stop growing so obviously the next stage now is this uh select committee hearing on on tuesday the 16th uh with the dcms what what should we expect from that well what we expect is that azim is going to have a opportunity, free opportunity to actually say his piece without fear of any repercussions. And parliamentary privilege means that whatever is said within the confines of that select committee um, cannot be subject to any litigation, so he can't be sued for defamation if he upsets anybody, right? Um, so that's what we can expect. But for me, the bigger picture is, and Azim has been talking about this, that this is an issue a wider issue mm. across sport, across society. So I would want the DCMS to actually grasp the nettle and question what is happening 
across all sports. Why the lack of continual lack of denial of opportunities for South Asian community? Um, not just playing, but boardroom level. Um, and to look at the institutional nature, discriminatory nature of the way sport has been run up to now, as we talked about institutional discrimination. Now, I go back, I keep saying about the lack of representation, I go back to, uh, I'll give you an example of how sport is institutionally racist. Um, I go back to 2015-2016, when all sports governing bodies, all 63 sports governing bodies, agreed to gender targets. Now, I've got no, got no issues I, uh, about targets or gender targets, but at the time, I spoke out at the time, um, when gender targets were issued, the targets were that all sports had to be 30% gender representation on boardrooms by Tokyo Olympics June 2020, otherwise there will be funding implications. Now at that time, had sport done its research, had Sport England done its research, had DCMS done its research, what they would have realised is that over a third of sports were already meeting that target. They were already on the way to meeting that target, but race was so far behind, wasn't even on the starting blocks. There was one chair of a sports governing body um, of, of ethnic minority, one, but just, just one chair, no CEOs at all. 40% of executive workforce was actually women at the time. So most sports were already meeting that target, yet all sports blindly agreed to gender only targets. Now that to me fits the definition of institutional discrimination. And what concerns me is that we now keep fighting and demanding for change. Who are we relying upon to bring about the change? Mm. The people that put us in this situation. Well, we are now reliant upon, most of them are still in place. We are relying upon the same people to bring about change. Now change is not gonna come about unless some of those people actually take a step back and say, do you know what? For real change to take place, some of us are gonna to have to step aside. Some of us are gonna to have to resign our positions when they come to renew. How many of them are prepared to do that? Because otherwise it's just mm. all talk, all talk. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and that is the big, big battle for us that nobody seems to be talking about how we are so unrepresentative and why. And that is so important to me. Mm. And it's shocking when you said and identified that the discussion around race wasn't important. It was more about gender, hitting gender targets. Why do you think that is? Why do you think no, that... I, 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 and, I'm just, I'm, and I'm just conscious we don't want to be pitting mm. uh, protected characteristics against protected characteristics. We're all in the battle together. Mm. But for, for me, leadership is about being able to see the big picture. Mm. Leadership is about being able to stand up, uh, uh, stand up and say, despite pressure on gender-only targets, yeah. there are other protected characteristics that are actually more of a priority, are lagging behind even further. So no, no sport England. We don't agree with what you're suggesting, despite the threat of withdrawal of funding, mm. we've got to look at the bigger picture. Because if that was 2015, 2016. We had no chairs at all of governing bodies. Even now, mm. five, six years on, yeah. there's only one chair. Only one chair of colour. You said you raised this at the time. What, what's been the response? It fell on deaf ears. It fell on deaf ears. Shocking. Now, my, my, at the time, Again, I go back to, there were people of colour, of ethnicity, on certain board, uh, on certain, um, not in this board, but more so in advisory groups mm. of governing bodies. Where was that voice? Mm. Where was that voice? Would you say there's not enough people speaking up about it and it's just lip well, service it may be that those conversations are taking place behind closed doors mm. but there comes a time when principal stance has to be taken and people have to come out and say look this is what we said at the time this is what we say you know and this is why this um meeting uh the select committee meeting on tuesday is so important to make sure that these 
discussions, the points that you've raised also come out? Absolutely. This, as I said, this is a pivotal moment for the South Asian community. Um, to me, this is our Black Lives Movement mm. moment. Mm. Right? We've had Black Lives Movement for over a year. Yes. That hasn't really transferred itself into any real progression, certainly for us. Mm. There has been little bits of a more, you see more visibility of um, Black uh, faces, certainly in the media presentation. Um, but for us, yeah. you, you name one person that you can see on screen mm. presenting, anchoring a sports show. It just hasn't transferred itself into opportunities for us. We've been left behind. Mm. Now, do we need to now demonstrate and have an Asian Lives Matter movement? You know, we shouldn't have to do that. Mm. So leadership is about... It comes back to me, and I find it frustrating, that just because it was Black Lives Movement mm. doesn't mean to say that the only people that mm. get those opportunities mm. are the black community. And again, I don't want us to be pitted against our Which, absolutely friends yeah. and colleagues and brothers and sisters mm. it shouldn't be about that mm. but there's a worry though now that this has all come to the forefront the discussions are now happening about making sure that this change and um as you said that the south asian community now are at the forefront of uh, obviously um this change and there's a need to now try and do the right thing for that particular community but then is there a worry that we might fall in the trap of tokenism because we're trying too hard now to make sure i would hope not i would hope not but before i go back but for that to happen mm. we've got to put ourselves forward mm. we've got to have voices we've got to have visibility we've got to have people prepared to speak up mm. and i still don't see enough of that yeah. I mean, I still, certainly cricket, I still don't see enough of that. Yeah. Even now, with all this happening, yeah. I still don't see enough people speaking. standing up and speaking up. Mm. Well, Lord Patel, who's now obviously the new chair for the Yorkshire County Cricket Club, he's launching the helpline, which goes live, I believe, on Monday. What do you think of that idea? And what, and what do you think of his appointment as well? I'm, I'm pleased with the appointment. Um, it, 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 what it initially does is it does instill that confidence in the community. Mm. a familiar face uh, that we can relate to. So that's a good starting position. Mm. Um, but obviously, he's got to be brave, and I'm sure he will be, but be allowed to make his own appointments uh, and not be afraid. Um, and, and what I hope doesn't happen is that we don't see people filtering uh, from sport to, uh, or opposition to position. But as I said, what does concern me is we want change, but at the moment we are reliant upon the people that have got us into this situation to bring about change. Mm. That's something that really concerns me, and I've been saying this for, 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 for a few years. Yeah. Right? Um, fresh faces, fresh ideas, different thinking, mm. uh, and away from this group think. Yeah. Right? Um, then I think you've then said about. Lord Patel, and what was the other thing you want? The helpline, his launching helpline. Yeah. helpline. Now, so as a solicitor, you'll also have people that come to you um, with discrimination or racism yeah. cases. So he's now opening this helpline yeah. to get people to approach and talk about any incidents that yeah. they've had. What do you think of that? I mean, it's good. Hmm. It seems on this occasion that there is independence hmm. because we had an independent panel Mm. Um, and I come across this all too often in my work that there is an independent investigation, an internal investigation. There's nothing independent about internal investigations. Uh, they never ever uh, provide justice. Uh, the complainant always has to go externally to obtain redress, uh, to, to obtain justice. So it seems to be the case that it, there is independence about it. What are they going to do with all this information? What are they going to do with all these complaints that they're going to raise, uh, that they're likely to receive, right? Some of it's quite nasty discrimination, but what I think also needs to come out of this, uh, and I've heard cases of clubs have been, they've sort of joined a league and that league has made it difficult for that club to be part of that system, be part of that organisation, to progress because of their lack of, let's say, lack of um, lack of a bar, you know, uh, facilities. So that's also held back the Asian community. And why is it that 
that has never ever been properly challenged that alcohol is something that the Muslim community will not uh, facilitate under any circumstances. So why are we continue to allow certain leagues to insist upon having a bar to be a member of that league? And, and again, these are the challenges that have never really come about. So I think the, 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 that also needs to be looked at, not just uh, because that stopped players from progressing opportunities mm. that they keep coming back to, uh, and not just abusive behaviour. But again, uh, what are they going to do with it all? Because obviously, yes, they, 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 there are a lot of people out there that will be deserving of an apology, but moving forward, what are we going to do? The, the, the whistleblower helpline uh, will open up a kind of world. What's the um, end game uh, for, for, for the county? For that? And I think just to finish off, I think our readers probably benefit from this um, hugely. If they have um, had some kind of uh, racial abuse or discrimination um, you know, levied against them, what do they need to do? What information do they need to put forward to be able to make sure that they get justice. Well, all they need to do for that helpline is just mm. report what happened, what happened to them, mm. and when. Roughly, I mean, they might not remember exact specific days, but just approximately when it was, how old they were, what happened. Mm. Because the a county, lot of people worry that, well, it was just us in a room, and they might not have the, enough evidence. So, you know, the, what would you, look, what would no, you advise? One of the things we always look at when mm. I'm determining these discrimination cases is. When something happens, mm. a discriminatory comment is made or whatever, mm. it's usually said in a way that other people do not see or hear. Mm. Because that's what perpetrators do. They don't mm. want to be, they don't advertise yeah. or shout it from the rooftop. Well, yeah, I'm only you know? joking. And the defence is yeah. always, always, well, the umpire never heard it or the referee never heard it, so I mm. never said it. Mm. No, most of the time those comments are made so that the officials don't hear it. Mm. Don't be frightened. If things have been said, then report it. You've done your bit, mm. then it's over to the the uh, helpline people that are administering the headline, helpline to, to, to look at it and gather the evidence and determine what they're going to do. Is it the case that there's going to be a pot of money from the government or ECB to compensate these people for what they've been through, what they've been subjected to? I mean, it may be, it may well be, I've had a conversation with somebody, it may well be that what they, he or she was subjected to may have affected them that badly and affected the performance that badly, may have denied the opportunity of a career. Mm. Well, thank you so much. I think um, you've really given us a lot thank of you. enlightenment on the issue. And, uh, you know, let's just hope um, that Yorkshire County Cricket Club can certainly rebuild itself um, from here. Uh, thank you so much to our audience. And if you have been subject to any kind of racial discrimination or racial abuse, then please do get in touch and we will try and ensure we can signpost you to the right people. Thank you so much.